In this video, we're going to highlight new features that are associated with punching shear in Adapt Builder 2020. These new features are primarily located in three distinct regions of the software. The first region is if we go to Floor Design and we look at the Shear Design Input. The Shear Design Input has now been reorganized to be more user-friendly, more efficient, and to just categorize in like selections for punching shear or two-way shear checks. You may notice this if, if you compare this version to previous versions, most of these selections in this upper block for design options are already located in the software in version 2019. What has been included now are some parameters for openings and how we go about checking punching shear with respect to openings, which is also a huge change and improvement between this version and the previous versions. Now we want to define the two parameter inputs here for openings. There's radius of detection and there's also maximum reduction per face of support. You'll note that in the documentation section of the help menu we also have a new feature supplement that goes through details of uh, the changes that have been made for punching share and it specifically defines these two options in more detail. But just as a quick summary if we look at radius of detection, this is 10 times the slab thickness. This is obviously the default in the program. And what this does is we take a uh, region around a column. So let's say that this is a circle around a column. And the radius here is 10 times the slab thickness. So the program will check within this per uh, periphery inside of this hatch zone. Any opening that is located within that zone, let's say there's an opening here, there might be even an opening here that straddles that imaginary boundary. Any opening that's within or straddles the boundary will be considered for punching shear. So in this case, the program would generate critical sections. Let's say there's a critical section here. And we take basically zones off of this column center and the location of the opening or the critical section that passes through the opening or conglomerate of openings would be discounted from the critical section that passes through it. The check 10 times slab thickness is just the zone for which we check for openings and we discount the critical section length for those openings. We're going to go back here to shear design and look at the second option which is maximum reduction per face of support. That's 90% in terms of the default setting. And what this means is we're going to go and just zoom in to a column. And we're going to say that there's an opening here. We'll say there's another opening here. Maybe an opening over here. And we'll do one more right there. The way the program handles openings is it would take essentially construction lines to the extreme corners. So from this center out to this corner, because these two openings overlap, for example, if I took a line through here, that goes to that opening. So the, the actual limit is out here. And so we'll go ahead and erase those lines. This is this particular opening. And we have also this opening construction line here and right there, let's say. So we have lengths on each side of the column. We have what we call the, if we look at the local axis orientation for this column, we have the S direction, the R direction, and we have, let's say, this is a positive S, this is positive R, so opposite would be negative S, negative R. And for each side of the column on the positive and minus R and S sides, we have some lengths that uh, are used to deduct from uh, the column or compare this 90% check. So we can see in this zone here, well, I'll hatch this. We have a zone here. We also have a zone over here. And we have a zone here. And the length of the opening, so here's one length, here's another length, and then another length over here. If the total sum of lengths as compared to the side of the column exceeds that threshold, 90% of the column face side, the program essentially assumes that that side is a free edge. So let's assume that in this case, I'll call this here side one, this is length one, I'll say, this is length two, this is length three, length four, length five, and six. If we take length one, compare it to this length 
or column side on the positive S face, and that's less than 90% of that length, then this is included. This area is included in terms of the, of the punching shear check. That happens on all four sides. In this case, side six does not, does not pass. So the program essentially says, assume that this is a free edge. And all of our critical sections, therefore, would be established as end edge conditions. The nice thing is the program does contain new options in the property grid for the user to modify that and to say, well, I don't want this to be assumed a free edge. I want to ignore that, and I want the program to check all four sides. And there is a way to do that in the property grid, which is our next uh, area that improvements have been made. Now, you'll notice a couple of things that are missing in shear design if you were to compare this to the previous version. Number one, the stud diameter or stirrup size is missing in this dialog. In previous versions, that was a global setting. In the new version, you have the ability to change that per column. So that's been removed from this particular location. What we'll do is we're going to go ahead and just select a column. And you could do this as a group of columns. I could select a group of columns. I could go here to punching shear, and we have several parameters that we want to define what those parameters are and what they do. Again, these can be changed in singular form or plural. We can select multiple and modify per a group. So let's take a look at just one column here. I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to look at each one of these uh, different settings. The, the method, the automatic method versus the user method. Automatic method just simply means the program categorizes the columns as it previously had done in other versions. Interior, which is a four-sided critical section. End or edge, which is a three-sided critical section. Or corner, which is a two-sided critical section. So this really behaves just like you would uh, as it would behave in version 2019 or 2018. If the user wants control over what sides participate, in the punching shear check, we can always change this to user. And now the user can say, I want, even though this is an interior condition, I want to only make it a three-sided or end-edge condition where you define which sides participate. In this case, the negative S face does not participate. So that means that we're assuming this is a free edge and our critical sections are established on the positive and negative R and the positive S side. The next option here, we're going to go back to auto, is the program will show us what condition has been selected uh, per the automatic method. So this is just read only. It just tells us what particular condition this column is. That can also be done graphically from the result display settings. And in the result display settings for punching shear uh, in this area here, we can show that as well. So we'll come back to that also. Let's go back to this column. And we have pre-compression. For ACI, the amount of pre-compression is used in the calculation of the two-way shear capacity of a column. Now, the program in previous versions has always defaulted to the minimum lower bound pre-compression of 125 PSI or 0.125 KSI. The user now has control over specifying how much pre-compression should be used for a particular column in that particular column check. So one workflow would be if the user uh, analyzed the slab, there were tendons in the slab, and the user went through and checked the pre-compressive stress, you could determine what the pre-compression is at this column on the four different sides, and maybe take the lower uh, value of those four sides and enter that value here. It still requires a user to enter the value, but it, uh, the program now gives the ability to override that value. The next option is reinforcement type. Studs or stirrups. This is the selection that was actually pulled out of the shear design options. When you select stud or stirrups, that just changes the selection. You can select a diameter or you can select a bar size um, for, for stirrups. We'll go back to studs. Number of rails per side. When the reinforcement type is selected as studs, the user can now uh, define how many rails per side you want to use in the R side and the S side of the column. The R side is the side, again, here our local axis um, orientation. 
R side would be this side, S side is this side, and this is plus and minus. This, this really is for plus and minus sides for either of the column directions. So this gives the ability for the user to specify unequal number of rails per side. And again, that's another selection that was made in shear design in previous versions that has been pulled out of here because now it's a local setting versus a global setting. It gives user more control over specifying those particular values for each unique column size that you might have in a model. The next option is spacing of studs. Again, this is something that has been in previous versions. It's just reorganized as a local setting versus global. Calculated means that the program will uh, output the reinforcement in zones. If you have, for example, five studs at two inches, six studs at three inches, 10 studs at four inches, the program would output those graphically and also in a report from report, punching shear, reinforcement, those would output those as groups of reinforcement or zones of reinforcement along a rail. If you use uniform, the program essentially normalizes the studs. It takes the total length of the stud per calculation and it takes the minimum spacing. So you always will get more studs with a uniform setting versus calculated. It's a conservative approach. It's just a way that the program takes and makes those studs and the uniform uh, uniformity in the spacing. The next setting is also read-only. This will uh, change over time where a user can modify this, whether or not they want to have the openings participate in the punching shear check. Uh, right now, this is always set to auto. You can see this selection. It uh, doesn't give another option. It just automatically considers openings. If you do not want the punching shear check to consider an opening, for example, if I model an opening here at this column, and let's say this this kind of gets qualified as an opening based on that 10 times the slab thickness check. I could always take this opening and and uh, right click and disregard it to ignore it in the check. So there are ways to eliminate openings from the punching shear check before you actually run it um, aside from changing it inside of this dialog. And the final thing is also read only. It's the total angle. This really just reports the total angle uh, for those zones where we have openings. So earlier I was kind of showing these these wedges or these zones where we had participation of an opening where we would deduct from the critical sections. And if we look at those zones and say, okay, th this is the hatched region that we're going to discount as we move away from the column, the program really just reports counterclockwise from the uh, positive R axis, we basically report the location or the angle of those uh, those uh, construction lines. So if we were to look at this angle here, the program would report these these angles here um, that essentially are used to calculate the lengths that we deduct from the critical set. The last thing that I'll show are graphical reporting enhancements. So let's go ahead and run this model. We're going to go back and I'm going to analyze the structure. It's already been meshed. We'll just analyze for the group of combinations. After we analyze and save the solution, we're going to go directly to floor design. We would go into shear design. We would set up our um, punching shear options and our opening options. If you want to set the reinforcement for columns, let's say I want to set this group of columns, for example, to a particular uh, size of reinforcement. So I'll select that group and I can modify, for example, I might change this to three quarter inch diameter studs. And maybe I want to use, you know, a, a three and two configuration for number of rails per side. Once we set up our specifications locally to each column, then we can go through and we can run the punching shear checks. So we'll execute the punching shear check. In the result display settings dialog, the result browser as it's informally called, we'll go here to punching shear. I want to check a strength combination. So let's either do a strength combination individually, or we could also envelope the strength combinations. Once that's selected, we can come back. And as was done in previous versions, we can check the status. One thing that's new is the stress ratio. The stress ratio now reports a couple of things. Number one, it reports the governing combination 
that produces the maximum stress ratio. Now this combination is not just for, or this, this number is not for a sequential index of only the strength combinations, it's for all combos. So if I go to loading, load combos, the first combination is really a service combo. The second one is also service. So the third one is strength, dead and live. That is the governing combination. And the governing critical section uh, that produces that ratio is shown as critical section one, which is typically almost always true uh, for uh, punching shear in these slabs. So the first critical section obviously has the least perimeter length. Um, in some cases, if we had the drop panel, imagine this is a drop panel, the, the governing critical section could actually be the first critical section outside the face of the drop panel. So this, this does not always mean that one will control, but it's fairly common without a model uh, that does not include drop panels or drop caps. Uh, the next option is condition. The condition will report the effective depth of the first critical section. So this is just gives you an idea of what that effective depth is for the first uh, section at D over 2 from face of column is. Uh, and then lastly, if we look at the reinforcement, the reinforcement output is similar to what it's been uh, in the 2019 version. If you have any questions about these new enhancements for punching shear, please contact us at adaptsupport at Thank you.